Welcome back to Bullstack Figure Reviews. Today we're going to be looking at Multiverse Blue Beetle Carapax. <laughs> and here is Carapax out of the box. This is a McFarlane mega figure, so a slightly larger figure than most of his uh, um, regular stuff. So you do get a little bit more plastic. Um, Carapax doesn't come with a whole lot of accessories. He just comes with alternate hands and it's like the, the open hands so I, I guess you could like pose him like shooting sh shooting something out of his hands or something like that or maybe stopping someone in their tracks um so he comes with the alternate hands and then he comes with a figure card which is always a nice touch i i really enjoy these cards i, I like as i've mentioned before i like to put them on a top loader and then just uh put them away and, and collect them so there it is in case you guys want to pause the video and re have a little read up on who the character is he's one of uh blue beetles uh enemies i don't i haven't watched the movie and i don't know too much about this character but uh as far as from what i could read like i said he seems to be one of the baddies um and of course he does come with uh with the generic mcfarland stand which um that that's a little this this is cool to have a stand but it's a little disappointing he looks like a figure that would be able to fly i see some thrusters and some mech wings um so it would have been nice had he included an actual flight stand but i know um you know it is a bigger figure so uh, i guess we're i'm pretty happy with the fact that that he's larger but really uh, a flight stand i think would have been good for this guy and he comes with a ton of detail i mean i just i i love all the detail like i already mentioned the 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 mech wings and then he has here his shoulder pads which are articulated which i'll get to the articulation later um i really like this paint job um it almost looks like these were stickers applied but it's not uh I, at least it doesn't look like it. It, it, it. I think that's the paint job. So he did a really good job in capturing, uh, you know, like light that's beaming out of these shoulder pads. So that's really nice. And he does have, you know, again, just a ton of sculpted detail just all over the chest, um, right around the armor from his uh, waist. Um, Let's take a look at the back. Look at that. Just, I mean, a really nice mech. It's almost like something you would see out of like Pacific Rim or one of those type of movies. Um, really, really nice figure. Uh, really big. So let's go ahead and measure him. So Carapax is right at about, uh, I want to say eight and a half if you were counting from the head. From the head to the, his uh, feet or uh closer to nine if you're counting it to his uh to his little mech wings back there so um so yeah he, he's a pretty pretty big hefty figure really nice okay so uh as far as articulation goes i do like uh the head can move pretty far up so in case you do want to have him in a like a uh, flight um pose you can actually capture a flight pose um and then the head goes about this far down, which is, again, really good range. Uh, as I've already mentioned, these shoulder pads are articulated and then move around. And then you have his, his arms that do go up and down. And his arms can rotate all the way around. But, you know, they're going to be just slightly hindered by, by that, by this, um, by this shoulder pad. So you, you can you can do that and then just pop that part off and of course it'll it'll be able to rotate all the way around and this just pops off it doesn't break it, it's on a ball joint so that's pretty cool so even if you do try to rotate it all the way around you're not going to break your figure um so the shoulder pads the arms uh rotate all the way around they go in and out and then you have the the elbows which can go about that far um i wish there was a cut here at the top where the bicep is at but there isn't so um it does have some um range limitations uh because of that because there is no cut there um but he does he's able to swivel at the elbow and then of course the hands uh do rotate but again um they're going to be hindered by some of his armor here around his um around his wrist so uh, that, you know, it's, it's still pretty good. It's, it's pretty good range of motion. 
So um, then moving up to his, or moving down to his torso, we do have, uh, there's gonna be some movement here, but it's this figure of mine is really, really tough to move. So the top part is having trouble moving around, but I know that there's a ball joint there. So maybe if I heated it up, I could probably get better range. Um, but as far as what he has at the waist, I mean, that's where he really shines. He can move all the way around and go up and down and can go down pre pretty far, as you can see right there. Um, so he has really good waist and his legs do go all the way out and all the way up. And the reason he can do that and this, I really love when McFarlane does this. He gave this uh, a soft piece. Some people call this a diaper and they don't really like it. But for me, it reminds me of uh, uh, higher priced collectible toys like Storm Collectibles. They they do that to a lot of their figures. They'll put soft, like really soft plastic. And so it doesn't hinder, you know, movement at all. Uh, you just got to be careful not to keep this kind of folded or bent like in the in the in the same position for you know for a long time like if you leave it posed and this part's being pinched you run into a situation where you may damage your figure so you, w once you pose them you gotta you gotta make sure that nothing's being pinched but still that's really really nice that he gives them uh this so that they're not hindered by you know like a hard plastic and limiting the range of motion so uh the knees double jointed double jointed knees so that's nice uh no no thigh cut there's usually don't get any thigh cut but still he has enough movement for for who he is um and his uh feet do go all the way down all they move all the way up um and he does have a, a rocker here there we go he does have a rocker so overall really nice figure uh, just a, a few of my gripes are um of course the the fact that he doesn't come with a stand um and by that i mean a, a flight stand it's a i like i mentioned before just everything tells me that this figure should be able to fly kind of like a hulkbuster or an iron man he's just a character that you just you wish he had a, a flight stand but um, you know, he, he doesn't come with the flight stand and I do wish he had a little bit better articulation right around the, the shoulder and the bicep, uh, but a lot of detail on this mega figure. Okay. So now with my rating ranking system that I do is I use two figures. I use one that I just think is really above average type of figure where i just I, I love the color scheme i love everything about it the articulation is just perfect for that type of figure um and one that is absolutely garbage which uh the that's what this bane build a figure is um so uh what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna uh see where carapax lies is he closer to uh mcfarlane azrael or a mcfarlane uh bane build a figure and I definitely think Carapax is a lot closer to Azrael. If Azrael is a 8 to 10, I think uh, Carapax is like about a 7. Uh, that Bane build a figure, that's about a 0 to 2. So uh, Carapax for sure, I'd say he's about a solid 7, 7.5. Um, if, if we just had a little bit more articulation at certain points i i think it would really elevate him but um he he's a magnificent figure just he he looks great he's gonna look great especially if you're able to uh get yourself a a, a good flight stand this is one that i 3d printed uh thanks for watching this is again bull stag figure reviews and if you like this video please go ahead and hit that like button and be sure to uh subscribe